Our next guest actually met Queen Elizabeth when she honored him following the horrific terror attacks that happened on September 11th. And this Sunday marks 21 years since our country was changed forever. Well, joining us now is America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani. Mr. Mayor, welcome to the show. Um, I do want to discuss 9-11 with you in that horrific day. But also, before we do that, Queen Elizabeth recognized you for your leadership as mayor through that terrible attack um, on New York City. What was your experience like when you met the Queen? Oh, it was, it was a, a wonderful experience. You know, obviously, I was very, very honored. And uh, I had with me my police commissioner and my uh, fire commissioner, who also received honors right, right after me. So I felt really good. I, I mean, I felt a little uncomfortable being singularly honored because this was a this was a major team effort and when i went up to her i said to her thank you very much your majesty but i have to accept this on behalf of the giants whose shoulders i rested on the people of the city of new york and she's saying well you're being too modest they need a leader and you were the leader and she thanked me for uh talking about winston churchill because i had said during the interviews during the time that I was inspired by Winston Churchill. I was reading a biography of his at the time. And the night that I got home, you know, about four in the morning, I just read, I read the biography, that part of the biography of the Battle of Britain. And I used it as kind of an example of how to, of how, first of all, to make believe you weren't afraid and act like you were brave and, uh, and, and tried very, very hard to be an example to my people about looking forward you know, being realistic about what was happening to us, constantly talking to him about how we were going to get ourselves out of it and giving us realistic plans to do it. I opened Broadway in two days. We helped open the stock exchange in four days. I, I may have actually moved things a little bit too fast, but I wanted people to try as quickly as possible to get back into the regular flow of life. I, I sort of see it as the exact opposite of what we did with the pandemic, by the way, in which we disabled our people. So you know what's weird about this year? For the last 20 years that we have commemorated 9-11, we, we were at war. We had a presence, at least in Iraq and Afghanistan. This will be the first year that we don't have a presence in Afghanistan. How different is that going to be for you? Dramatic. I mean, uh, Sean, for, for every year at this time, until, until last year, I was always asked, are we safer now? Even during the Obama era and the Trump era. And, the, and I would say, yes, we are. We're safer now. I mean, we're not perfectly safe. This is not over. They still want to come here and kill us. But we've done very specific things to ensure ourselves. Uh, I said, you know, starting with President Bush's massive response, for which I said he would always be considered a great president, having acted so quickly to all the changes we made. The last two years, and now this year, I have to say we're in more danger than we were before September 11th. And now I'm sure of it. When you look at the reports of the training they're doing in Afghanistan to come and attack us, which, which, are, which are now public, and when you consider they have $85 billion of very, very sophisticated equipment that Biden virtually donated to and also gave up the Bagram Air Base. I don't know why more isn't made of that. That was an extraordinarily uh, insane and irresponsible act to give up Bagram. It was a newly uh, fortified air base. Uh, the terrorists have it now. It's a training place for them to come and kill it. And how about it's 400 miles from China? Someday a president who, God forbid, might be dealing with an attack from China, is going to say, why the hell did Biden give up that air base? Could it be the $31 million his family got from China? Hmm. Mr. Mayor, how are you planning on remembering 9-11 this Sunday? Well, I will go to the ceremony every year I do uh, and uh, listen to the names of the people that were lost and spend a little time, I guess, really meditating about the greatest memories that I have and the worst memories that I have in my life. I mean, the memory of the man jumping 100 stories and 
his entire body being decimated by the street. Uh, and the memory of my firefighters walking in there, I mean, I, I don't want to pick on a recent incident where the police hesitated to go in. There was no hesitation here, none. In fact, I have people all over the world that I meet that come up to me at the oddest times and tell me I wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for your firefighters or police officers. While we were leaving the building, they were entering the building. And you can't imagine the kind of confidence that gave us not to panic. And because we didn't panic, uh, thousands of us didn't get killed. And also in the 9-11 report, often not noticed is uh, an entire page that talks about how this was even with um, some of the mistakes that were made in terms of the numbers of people saved, the greatest rescue effort in American history. They, they said they rescued virtually every single person they were capable of rescue, meaning not above the fire where you couldn't get to. For all of those reasons, we should never forget what happened on that fateful day. Oh, Giuliani, Sean, thank you, you for... You are, you are so right, Sean. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your, your memories with us. And, uh, and we look forward, as you said, we will be paying tribute here on Newsmax on Sunday all day long. Thank you for being with us. I know us. you will. Thank, and thank you for doing that. That really is a wonderful thing to do. <laughs> well, it's the least we can do. As I mentioned, we will be having live coverage starting at 8 a.m. this Sunday. We hope you will join us then.